Hey, what's up, you guys? I'm back, and I want to tell you, uh, I, I want to do a video real quick. This was a request from one of my uh, clan mates. He asked me if I could do a video for uh, giving a guide to how you can get to Champion League. So, you guys, I came up with uh, this new idea. Maybe it's uh, these are 10, 10 basic things that you would have to use or do in order to become champions. So, here it is, you guys. I'm going to give you 10 things that you would need in order to get to Champion Leagues. Now, if you could if you could find a way around these, then my hat goes off to you because uh, it is these things I feel are pretty essential to getting into Champion Leagues. So let me break it down for you guys. I have these 10 commandments that I'm doing. And let me get to the first one and show you guys what exactly you need in order to get to Champion Leagues. So let's go with commandment number one. Uh, in order to get to Champion Leagues, you're going to need to max out your troops. Now I have about five characters, five characters in the game that I feel are the most important for you to max out. Uh, and they would be witches, archers, wizards, wall breakers and golems now you could probably get around that you know by having a lower level level barbarian uh if you're gonna go hog rider you're gonna have to get him up but this is basically my method of doing it uh just going for 50 percent wins and these are the troops that i'm using so definitely maxing out your troops would be a big priority in getting to champion leagues and let's move on to number two. Number two, have a good attack plan. Now, again, I said that I'm using 50% tactics, and that would be my recommendation to go for 50% victories. And you know what? When you find bases that only have 14 trophies as the highest amount, you're going to get, you know, four or five trophies just from getting a 50%. So it's it's a good thing just to build up small, you know, because it's just two battles and you already got 10 trophies. That's my recommendation, you know, and also a good attack plan. You have to form uh, a team that you feel is good enough for attacking players at your level and even higher, you know. And I feel if you're going to go with hog riders, you could do that up until I believe it's master two. Master 2 is around the level I saw where you're going to start fighting people that are uh, Town Hall 10s and they have Infernal Towers and they're usually set to multi and they just destroy your Hog Riders. So around, you know, Master 2, Master 1 and Champion Leagues, I don't feel Hog Riders are that good anymore. Some people can pull it off, but uh, it's really difficult. So number 2, you guys, have a good attack plan. Know what kind of troops work for you. Uh, my method might not work for you and you might be able to come up with your own strategy of players or uh, troops that you could use that are better at getting a victory for you and that leaves us with number three have a good defense plan now I believe it's master three master three is when you'll notice that every time you go offline you'll get attacked right away so it always is a good idea to have a base layout that will keep enemies from getting two stars. Two stars is basically what you want. You don't want uh, players getting two stars off you. If you can manage somehow to have a good enough base design so that they can't get to your town hall, that's fine. That's usually why people throw all the stuff outside so that the weapons can can clean them up so that they can't get to that town hall. And of course, you know, up until up until about Master 3, people are still farming around there. So you should have some easy victories. But just having a good defense is always a good thing because you will get attacked very fast when you're going up the trophy levels. And that leaves us with number 4. Max out your clan castle. Now why is, why is having a clan castle important? Well, that's because... Your clan castle is for two things. When you're on defense, you're, you're, uh, if you center your clan castle in your base correctly so that they can't pull your, your troops out, those usually distract the enemies if they get inside 
and your weapons can pretty much clean them up and also when you're on the attack uh, if you can fit a golem or heavier uh, characters in there that's always a good thing if you have a good clan and they donate so it's always a good thing to have a clan castle to back you up and you know a lot of people use clan castles against heroes and you know usually having two witches in there is a good thing so it's a must to have a good clan castle level five I recommend alright and so number five max out your army camps uh, usually you will fight a lot of people to where you only get uh, 49 percent and just having one extra character you know one one extra archer would have been you know the difference in making it or in getting the victory or losing so you want to have as much troops as possible when you're attacking people so you gotta max out your army camps that's always a good thing number six have at least five spells now I can't stress this enough how important spells are in the game they're usually the turning points depending on if you lose or win you if you watch the replays you'll notice that it could have been because of a misplaced spell or the timing of when you're putting your spells down that's usually why uh, you will lose a victory is because of spells and what types of spells are also important so I would recommend using uh, lightnings rage spells and freeze spells those three things you could use jump spells depending on what types of troops you're using but going with the the default method that I'm setting up for you guys I would say those are the the most majority of players use lightning freeze and rage spells so you know getting maxing out those and having uh, those types of spells are usually the default of what players use and let's go on to number seven have at least level 10 heroes now the heroes are usually the anchors in your team and um, I I've noticed that if if you have level 10 heroes that's good enough I feel to make it to champion leagues uh, anything lower and you'll find yourself losing because your king probably wasn't strong enough to uh, hit the town hall or hit the the building before he was taken out so I've just noticed that level 10 heroes are usually the minimum I would say of using you could probably have if you're lucky you could probably come up with a team you know that won't require using heroes but usually on defense I would say you know a level 10 queen is really good so that's just my that's just my recommendation having level 10 heroes if you're going to champion leagues that's my minimum and that goes uh, that goes with uh, leaves us for number eight number eight go for weaker players now again this is this deals with the trophies that you see when you come across people that only have like 10 or 14 trophies I would still say go for those because even when you go for bases that look like you could win you might lose It's it's always unpredictable how your units are gonna move unless you you know exactly how your your characters are how they maneuver is very unpredictable even on some bases you think you could uh, you could win and so this is just the quick method of getting up fast I would say going for weaker players is always the best thing especially when you get to even master one or even in champion leagues you can still fight players that are in a lower level like in uh, master uh, three you know so I would say go for weaker players just to guarantee a victory and usually the weaker players come on during the day uh, at nighttime like I'm in California time right now so around midnight you know around those times usually all the bases have been attacked already and the only ones left are the bases that no one wants to attack because they're too difficult so a good time to, to get on when uh, players are out of their shield is around you know the mornings I would say to afternoons those are good times for you to get in and to engage in players and engage in battles so that's always a good default step to take go for weaker players and you will come across a lot of those uh, during those hours number nine take out the clan castle troops and enemy heroes if it's accessible 
Now, skipping through bases, you will find a lot of players that leave their clan castle in an easy position for you to get to. And their heroes, too. They'll have the heroes walking around the outside. So it's always a good idea to pull a clan castle troops and heroes so that you can take them out and you won't have to worry about those. Uh, I might be doing a video later of how to take out clan castle troops and heroes very easily. And even if they're maxed out, you know, you could even fight uh, level 40 heroes, you know, and take them out with just witches or um, with just barbarians and archers. So I might do that in another, in another video, but you can see I'm doing uh, my method here of just taking them out by pulling them and leading them into a corner so that they're away from weapons. You could take them out and you won't have to worry about them and they won't get in your way when you're getting uh, the 50% victory if that's the strategy you're going for that I recommend. So there's always a must, make sure you take out those heroes. And uh, that leaves us with number 10, learn when to fight and when to pass. Uh, again, only going for weaker bases is my recommendation, but you guys, you will come across a lot of bases where, I don't know how to say this, but you're gonna come across a lot of bases where you're gonna you're gonna try and think to yourself, okay, this is good enough, I'll just take this, you know. But it's always better to to get that extra, just use those extra five skips, whatever it takes to get to the base that has no heroes or that has you know that has already been attacked, and you're and you don't have to worry about the clan castle troops in there. Or, you know, you might even find bases with uh, no elixir in their expos. Always go for those easy wins because your goal here is just to get to Champion League. You're not trying to prove anything. If you are, you know, I by all means go for it. But usually in those cases, you'll end up losing and hating yourself for not just, you know, trying to get something easier. There's no, no shame in doing that, I feel. So this is just an easy method for you guys to follow. 10 basic commandments, these basic steps to getting the Champions League. Uh, I feel these are the the minimum things you would need. You could probably get to, to uh, Champions Leagues on a level Town Hall 9, you know, without uh, Town Hall 10. But it might be a little bit more difficult. And I feel these, these basic things are things you will be needing to getting the Champions League but even these small things right here could take a while for you to get I understand that but you guys these are my uh, requirements that you guys could follow and uh, I will be posting another video hopefully this week showing you how uh, the video I did when I was in San Francisco at the Supercell meetup when I got the Champions League and yeah you guys well i hope you enjoyed this if i left anything out let me know in the comments down there but this is my basic 10 steps how to get to champions leagues thank you guys for watching i'll see you next time